Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Monday Thursday worship service. Tonight, we're going to do something very special, really something we've never done before. Tonight, for the first time in the history of our church, we're going to be observing a virtual online communion service together as the body of Christ. You know, unfortunately, because of this current coronavirus crisis, we can't meet together physically like we'd love to do. We can't touch each other. We can't hug each other. But that does not mean we can't continue to worship and sing and proclaim God's word. That doesn't mean we can't celebrate the Lord's Supper together. It just means that for now, at least, we have to adapt to this new normal and learn to do what we've done in the past in new and creative ways. Folks, listen, this is not the first pandemic that the Church of Jesus Christ has faced in its long history. We are not unique in that regard, and we're certainly not the first Christians to ever go through times of great trial and times of great suffering. On the contrary, but through it all, you know what? God has always shown himself to be completely and utterly faithful. And that's why God's people have always responded with quiet confidence in times like this, saying, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So tonight, in the shelter of your own home, we invite you to gather your family around as we break bread together on our knees. You know, have your bread and wine or, or your juice readily available, and then when we come to that appropriate moment, we'll all take communion together at the same time. But in the meantime, we invite you now to join with us, lift up your voice as we call one another to worship, and as we pray the scriptures together. You're gonna to be seeing the words of scripture up on your screen, the call to worship will appear, and we'll read responsively just as we would if we were all here together. You know, this has always been one of our holiest and most beloved worship services. May it be tonight as well. You know, it's time for us to recognize that we are going through a time of testing like never before. We really are. Just like our ancient ancestors, we too are on a journey through the wilderness from slavery to freedom as our Lord Jesus leads us on a new Passover from death to life. So just as the Israelites once applied the blood of an unblemished lamb on the doorpost of their homes as a sign of their faith in God's deliverance, may the Lord apply the blood of his son on our hearts tonight. Folks, that's our prayer for all of us this day. Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Only he can bring hope and healing to our suffering, broken planet. So join with me now as we begin our service and let's call one another to worship. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. On this night, Christ gave us a new commandment to love one another as he has loved us. On this night, Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. O oh Lord, help us this night not to fall away in fear. Strengthen our faith, increase our love, and grant us courage to take up our cross and follow you. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits. And in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, 
Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you, you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Join me in response. Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on me, a traitor at your table. Our hands are unclean. Our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, O Lord, are the God of our salvation, and you share your bread with sinners. So come and cleanse us, we pray. Feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him. Come and transform our hearts by the power of your matchless love. Amen. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. On this night, Jesus said to his disciples, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, because I tell you, I will not eat from it again until the kingdom of God comes. So our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. 
Heavenly Father, we come to this table in complete awe and reverence that on the night of your betrayal, you'd still invite us. Heavenly Father, we do this in remembrance of you. So we ask now that you'd consecrate this meal, Lord Jesus, as we consecrate ourselves as we come and take this bread and this cup. We say thank you. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your sacrifice for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be alone tonight. You might be with your wife. You might be with your family. But we invite you now to take communion with us. Let's do this together. Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus says, this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together and give thanks. Father, we thank you for your grace. In the midst of suffering, in the midst of trial, you are there and you are God. So Lord, we pray tonight that your perfect love would cast out all fear in our lives. Help us to find our refuge and our shelter, shelter in your welcoming arms. Lord Jesus, we trust you. You are the Lamb of God. Continue to feed your flock. Keep us strong. Keep us safe. We pray for the healing of the world through your precious blood. In your holy name we pray. Amen. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him.
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in his face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side in Jesus in the middle. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, 
darkness overcame the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi! Eloi! Lama sabachthani! Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. At this point in our service, we want to invite you to a time of intercession and prayer. We want to have a time of repentance. We want to have a time of intercession for the healing of our world. So we're going to gather around the cross. I invite you as families, as singles, wherever you are, just take this moment to be still and silent before the Lord Jesus and pray to him. Pray for God's deliverance of the world by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's thank him for his sacrifice and the atonement that comes from the Lamb of God. Thank you. 